Hi everyone, the Ulster Expat here. Um, yeah, following on from the guys, a lot of the guys on YouTube, we're going to do some short, sharp video content. Um, yeah, to keep the the editing down, keep the keep the content coming uh, more quickly, and trying to yeah keep up with the generating the content, but also um, you know having a life. And uh, yeah, as as thing, I was watching uh, Rusty. His latest, some of Rusty's latest videos, and he was talking about having kids and how that sort of um, precludes him from sort of doing sort of long editing and videos and stuff. So you know, I'm I'm in the same position, uh, but yeah, I'm you know I'm always interested in, in watching content, uh, and hopefully you are too. So uh, what I'm going to do, I mean, I think I promised this in my in my first video for the for the forty eight people that saw it. Uh, is that I'm going to give you a rundown of my uh, of my setup, uh, and yeah, and then we'll and then we'll take it from there. So this is now take three um, of the uh, the brewery tour. I keep uh, messing up with the the sign, so hopefully this one will work out. So yeah, you can see this is the outside of my garden office stroke brewing space. Um, yeah, these things said previously, these things are not cheap. Um, but they're certainly uh, cheaper than a house extension. So this was uh, our reasoning behind going down this route and uh, getting getting extra space in the house quite quickly. So I'll take you indoors and uh, give you a tour around. So we'll begin at the at the brewing space. Uh, so you can see here, this is where my uh, all the brewing happens uh, in this in this room. Um, so the first thing to point out really is this is the the table. So the table is my sort of one extravagance in terms of the equipment. Uh, whenever I was kitting the the brew space out, it's a yeah, it's a bespoke um, you know uh, stainless steel table. Uh, with enough space in it to get uh, the one concession to my wife, which was a, a tumble dryer, which we don't have in the house, uh, but also to get the, the fermentation fridge in uh, as well. So it just keeps everything neat and, and out of the way and gives me enough space, uh, just about enough space to, to get brewing on. I mean, everybody would love more space all the time, but it certainly, it does the job and uh, lets me uh, brew without too much, um, too much trouble. Um, so yeah, stainless steel just, I mean, that was probably the expensive bit was to put stainless steel on it. You could have got the cheaper, cheaper things on it, but you know, I, I like the idea of being able to, to, uh, to wipe it down clean, even though it doesn't look that clean at the moment. Um, so then in addition to the, or underneath the table, got a pretty standard fermentation fridge, uh, done the same way that 99% of the, 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 the brewer, home brewers do their, uh, do their fermentation fridges. Um, just open it up and you can see, but not, there's nothing really groundbreaking. Yeah, so there's a 40 watt tube heater in the uh, in the bottom. There's a plywood shelf with some um, holes drilled to help with air circulation. And yeah, my fermentate, my uh, stainless steel fermenter is in there. That's a, that's an, a brew, an SS Brewtech mini brew bucket. So enough enough space to to brew uh you know nine or ten liters batches which is all that i'm doing so it's, it's good enough for me the fridge itself it's a it's a 45 centimeter wide fridge um again trying to do everything uh small uh on a small footprint so uh when i was brewing in the cupboard under the stairs i actually had two of these uh in under the cupboard and stairs one for conditioning and one for for serving and um, so uh, you search long and hard for a small fridge. They're, they're quite hard to, to, to find the, the right size, but, but I got there in the end. Um, so yeah, then in addition to, or beside the, the brewing space, we've got the, the uh, standard, you know, brewery storage unit. I think these are like the big, big dug, I think they're called uh, storage racks. Uh, just got the, the normal wooden, uh, wooden shells on them um but you know that it's fine it's a bit messy but it, it does what it says on the tin uh and you know 
you know, is more than enough space for me to sort of just chuck everything on. Um, got my sparge water heater uh, there. Um, and my my bowl of light taps. So the sparge water heater is interesting enough. So if you brew on the Braumeister the way that they tell you to in the um in the manual, I don't even think you really need uh sparge water. So some people do know sparge uh, on the Braumeister, but uh, you know I've um extracted my brewing profile from from Brewfather. And the way that they do it on Brewfather is that you have a small amount of uh, a small sparge um, dur during each brew. So I think on a ten liter batch, I would normally uh, I would sparge probably with about three liters. So so nothing compared with the amount of sparge that you might get in you know a standard grandfather uh, brew day. But um, but yeah, so it makes a difference you know to to have something that I can that can heat up uh, an extra bit of water to to help with the sparge. Yeah, mentioned there the bowl I tap. Can't recommend these things highly enough. Um, I you know I send competition beers out. I send a limited amount of beers out to to friends and family as well, uh, and the bowl I tap really just enables you to you know get um get the beer into the bottles with minimum wastage, and really helps with the the quality in terms of that you're able to flush the bottles with CO two prior to filling and they. The way they fill they, they fill with minimal uh, splashing uh, so yeah uh, i have it on a, a sort of this uh, a, a bench capper an old bench capper there again that's a hangover from brewing in the kitchen uh, couldn't have it uh, set up anywhere um permanently but i actually quite like having it on the on the capper there it sort of keeps it modular i can i can bring it out uh, and and bottle uh, as and when needed because actually to have it on the the keyser uh the bowl eye tops are they're quite they're quite cl they're quite big things uh so i think it would be it would protrude quite far from my uh keyser and would be in risk of getting knocked etc um and yeah so i think it's 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 stayed on that bench capper and you know i think that i'm i'm happy with the way the way that it works at the moment uh so i'm not going to change anything uh all of the the brewing sundries, the bottles, all of the the chemicals, etc., up up high to out of the way of the out of the way of the children, um. But yeah, and uh, sorry, nearly nearly forgot, but I will I will self indulge uh, a little bit so you can see my my proudest moment in in brewing so far was that I got a a rosette for third place on on the table. So not setting the brewing world alight, but really it's my first uh, my first ever sort of um prize in, in brewing so in however many years of brewing maybe seven years of brewing but uh yeah i mean i, I mean i'll i'll reiterate just the, the the benefits of of you know putting beers into competition the, the amount of feedback that you get uh the excitement i mean i yeah genuinely at the prize giving of every competition i you know maybe have a <laughs> Delusions of grandeur that I'm going to uh, get a prize at every um, at every competition that I enter, but certainly got got that uh, uh, for Brewcon World Series uh, five in twenty twenty two. Yeah, got got the <laughs> got the uh, won won the rosette in twenty twenty two. I only received it um, a matter of weeks ago, so there was a, a well documented uh, delay in getting the the prizes and the the rosettes from Brewcon, but. Now that I have it, I'm 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 not complaining. I actually, in addition to the rosette, I actually got some prizes for that. I wasn't expecting prizes, but I got uh, I got some hops with it as well. So I think they're HBC five eight six. I think I've got the numbers right. So yeah, really a nice surprise to get uh, a prize with it as well. And actually, the my latest beer that I just uh, kegged yesterday uh was uh, a vacant gesture clone basically with the the mosaic taken out on the hbc 586 put in uh so we've taken a, a taster from the from the fermenter and it yeah tasting tasting good uh, so we've got high hopes for uh for that in a couple of weeks whenever it's uh whenever it's carved up and clear and cleared up a bit uh what else do we have in the room so yeah so along with the the kids um uh, beanbag we've got you know enough space for a very small sofa bed so the the uh the brewing space can be used as an emergency guest bedroom if 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 needs be and that moves me on to my 
pride and joy. So this is a two tap, uh, two tap kegerator. Um, my disclaimer is that I'm by you know in no way a DIY expert. Um, so this is you know a you know a standard uh, standard small uh, chest freezer. Uh, I put the collar on with a bit of you know bit of wood that I bought from from Wix. Um, you know, bit of bit of uh, no more nails and uh, Bob's your uncle. So, yeah, it's you know got the space. It's got two taps on at the moment. I think you probably could extend it to three if I really really pushed it. But you know, you know, you know, I'm brewing really for myself. Uh, and I think having two two kegs on at any any one time is probably more than enough for me. Um, and as you can see, I've got a third keg. I can have a third keg uh, in conditioning. Got the secondary regs on, uh, which help me, uh, you know, enable me to set, you know, the the carbonation independently for for each of the kegs that are on, uh, the, um, you know, on at, at any one time. Uh, probably do need to put a third, uh, gas line in so that I can properly condition beers. Um, you know, so I can have them carbon carbonating at, uh, and conditioning at the same time. That's an old cider that that's been in the keg for about three months, so it's it's it's, um, it's carbonated, uh, and I sort of keep going back to it, uh, whenever whenever any one of the beer ke kegs kick, um, small two kg gas bottle. Looking at uh, up upsizing that because you know you can never have too much gas. I would say in 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 my opinion. And it obviously it's a bit annoying when you have to, to replace them out. Um, and also the uh, you can see uh, underneath the kegs, you can for, for those that you, you sharp eyed amongst you, you can see the LEDs flashing. I have the Plato Plato kegs, uh, which are really, really smart bits of uh, equipment that monitor how much um, beer you have in a keg. So it really Helps me plan out brew days so that I know when I'm coming to the end of a keg, uh, where where when I'll have space, uh, to 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 condition so, um, I can start brewing and having uh beer in the fer fermentation fridge, uh, at the same time as uh, as I'm running low on a keg and then can sort of continue that cycle uh, quite well. And and then the last bit really is uh this bad boy here. So I have a you know you talk about well how big how big is too big for a TV and uh, you know I'm always of the opinion that you can never go uh, big enough. So this is a fifty five inch OLED TV which is brilliant for watching some YouTube content on, uh but also because they're all smart TVs now I, you know I can get uh, Sky Sports and and the BBC and everything on there. So it's great for watching uh, Six Nations or golf or cricket. Um, you know, on so you know, really, really good uh, addition to to the space. So yeah, so I'm going to pan back round to the uh to the brewing um space now. So as I said before, going to try and keep uh the the videos short and sweet. I'm you know verging on fifteen minutes here, but in line with sort of what some of the other brew tubers have said, Rusty and Brewboy Calibre, going to keep it short, sweet and uh, sharp video content, uh, minimum, minimal editing uh, to enable me to get more and more content up. So if you've enjoyed this uh, little tour of my brewing space, you know, please, you know, like and subscribe uh, and I'll see you on the next one. Thank you very much.